tell me more, tell me more. Was it love at first sight? No, because it's a coil. Hey, welcome to episode 11 of The Hormone Diaries. This one is going to be a bit more of an update, but also a kind of like, what the F is my body doing? Like, what, what? Hmm. I have so many grievances with my body at the moment. I just want to like smack it around the face, and then I realise that that would be my face, and I don't want to get slapped. Oh, I'm just going to have to like tell it off, just like, stop doing the things you're doing. Ah, anyway, this video is going to be like a literal hormone diary. Like, this is a diary entry. Like, dear diary, today my body did this, and this is why it's pissing me off. And dear diary, la 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 stop menstrual cycle periods, I hate it. So if you've been following my journey, you'll know that my menstrual cycle is really long. Like it averages maybe around 50 days or something. Like it's really, really long, which on the one hand I'm grateful for because it means that I have less periods because there's more time between them. But on the other hand, I never like know when it's actually going to happen, when it's gonna come on. Although I've gotten quite good at reading body signs that I can usually be like, Today is the day. And another regular thing that happens with my cycle is that my boobs hurt for about two weeks before I come on, which as I have ranted about many a times before, is not ideal, not ideal at all. So the weird thing that my body did in the last cycle was that my boobs started hurting mid cycle. And by mid cycle, I mean in the middle of like my 50-ish day cycle. It wasn't just a one-off thing and I was getting cramps and I was like maybe those ovulation cramps? I don't know. Do ovulation cramps feel different to period cramps? I don't think I've experienced many ovulation cramps but somebody told me that you feel them like more to one side whichever ovary is like passing the egg around this this month. I don't know. I had like two weeks of my boobs hurting mid-cycle and cramps on top of it. The cramps weren't every day, but I was just like, what, what the hell is this? And also, during my last period, normally what happens is day one of my period, my boobs just feel lighter. And that's kind of how I've known that I'm coming on that day because suddenly I'll wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh, oh wow, they don't hurt anymore. And then like later that day, I'll be like, there's the period. But with my last period, my boobs hurt throughout the period as well. So I didn't have a big gap in my last cycle of when my boobs weren't hurting. So it was like boobs hurting and being heavy and painful and swollen and, and all of this was just like a constant reality for me in my last cycle. So just not great. Like body, body, stop. So I decided that there were two possible reasons as to why mid-cycle my boobs were hurting and I was getting cramps and they were either my period is going to be coming early, i.e. early for me, um, or I'm pregnant. That wouldn't be ideal, although it would be great for views. It was whilst I was on holiday with my family in Budapest and I was just texting my boyfriend just like, I think I'm going to take a pregnancy test when I get home. Like, Obviously these aren't the signs of pregnancy. Like, maybe they are, are they? I don't know. And there was no way I was pregnant. We were like having safe sex. I was like fully ready to come straight home and pee on a stick. Not gonna lie, I probably was gonna film it because I was, I was like 90% sure I wasn't pregnant. But I wanted to do it just to rule out that possibility. So that's kind of why I was like, oh, I'll film it and it'll be great for views and I'll do the classic like, am I pregnant? Not clickbait, clickbait. And then like thumbnail with me in a pregnancy test like, oh, oh, oh. hormone diets get loads of views. But then whilst I was on holiday, my period came. So not pregnant, not pregnant and not getting views. Yeah, so my last cycle was 32 days, which is like a normal person averagey cycle. So that's kind of cool. I'm like, is my next one going to be the same? But here's the thing. You'd think that the um, boob hurting thing would like average out. So like my boobs hurt for about two weeks and that's a long time because I had such a long cycle. But no, with a 32 day cycle, my boobs still hurt for two weeks. You'd think it would just like shrink down just to like 
become proportionate to the length of the cycle, but no. Mm -mm -mm. Now I'm like, oh God, do I have to live with my boobs hurting half of the time? Like literally half of the time my boobs hurt, half of the time they don't. Mm. That is not something that I want to live with. Not sure why my period came early, and now I'm even more clueless as to what the length of my next cycle is gonna be. Just, what is that about? I'm like, I've no idea. Oh, and on top of all of the boob hurting and the period coming early and thinking I was pregnant for like a hot five seconds, um, I got cystitis. So, <gasps> my body really hates me right now. I've had cystitis a few times and normally I will just like down loads of water, just like so, so, so much water and it's gone within a day or two. Like it's fine, it doesn't develop into a UTI or anything, it's just cystitis. I just have like a constant need to go to the toilet, which by the way is not ideal when you're on holiday with your family and you're trying to explore a new city. Normally my cystitis will last a day or two and I got back home and I was like, it's been a week and it is still not going. And then I booked a doctor's appointment and the morning of my doctor's appointment, it was the worst. I woke up at 5 a.m. needing the loo and I could not get back to sleep because the urgency with which I needed to pee again was so strong. And I was just like back and forth from the toilet every five minutes from 5 a.m. And my doctor's appointment was at 9 a.m. And I just remember being like, ah, am I gonna make it? Um, I did make it, but I had to like run to the toilet just before my appointment. I've got some antibiotics now and I can already feel it working. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed. So where am I at now on this journey? I know a lot of people who watch the Hormone Diaries also came off the pill around a similar time or it's inspired them to um, try no hormones for a bit. Update me on your situation. How's it going with you? Are you like much happier because I know some people who like off the pill off hormones they're like oh my god this is so much better I hated being on the pill I feel like I'm the opposite I'm like no life was great when I was on the pill and now it's shit so yeah I just really want to know where you're at with it and what's going on is anyone in the same position as me like I am at breaking point especially with the boob thing and the periods themselves do you know what I cannot be asked I cannot be asked if there is a life where there are no periods sign sign me up i don't really know what my next step is i have this thing with like completing goals and i think i came off the pill in july last year and i have this thing in my head like come on honey you can do it a year you can make a year um because then that would be like a nice round number and you can say you tried it for a year and it wasn't for you but does that really matter surely like 11 months is like just as great. I don't know. I have a just, I don't know what to do. I'm like literally at a crossroads right now. I could keep doing this until I hit like the year anniversary and then reevaluate or like right now I can literally go and get my pill packets because I still have them and I checked them the other day and they are in date until May 2018 and I could just take one right now and just get back on the pill. So for me, I'm like either go back on the same pill that I was on because I know that treated me well or um, get the marina coil because the marina is the same hormones as the pill I was on so it's progesterone only but it is just localized like in your uterus like it's not throughout your whole body which is what happens when you like take the pill or get an injection or implant or things like that so it'll affect your menstrual cycle it'll affect everything going on here but it won't necessarily like affect the rest of your body and the other things like the side effects like your mood and sex drive and like things like that but then I'm also terrified of getting the coil put in like every person I've spoken to who's had the coil has said that it's the most painful experience of their life and this is people like pre-children so that's where I'm at literally at breaking point I think I rambled on about all of this enough now um thank you so much for watching please give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and please do let me know in the comments your experiences with coming off the pill coming off hormones going back on hormones like where you're at with your personal hormone diary start your comment with dear diary <laughs> no you don't have to do that don't forget to subscribe because i make new videos every week and i'll see you soon bye